presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look, it's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who has come to Earth with physical powers far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can meet tall buildings at a single bound, bend steel in his bare hands, race a speeding bullet to its target, and who wages a never-ending battle against crime and oppression disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. When we last saw him, Kent, as Superman, had captured the yellow mask and turned the master criminal over to the police. Returning to the Daily Planet, he was informed by Lois Lane that editor Perry White wanted to see both of them in a hurry. As our story opens today, Kent and Lois are outside editor White's office waiting to be announced. Listen. Yes? Clark Kent and Lois Lane? Have them come right in, please. Now, as I was saying, Mr. Remsen... This city has never had a crooked DA in all its history. So the Daily Planet will more than welcome the chance to put all its power and prestige behind the movement to get rid of District Attorney Parker. If ever a man was guilty of using his high office for crooked, unprincipled... Oh, uh, oh, come in, Lord. Hello. Hello, Clark. Oh, Mr. White. Got your orders for us to appear before you pronto. So we came running. Clark, Lois, I want you to meet Mr. Remsen. Ralph Remsen. Oh. How do you do? Remsen. I recall that name. Weren't you District Attorney Parker's assistant at one time? That's right. Oh, of course, I remember now. You resigned because you claimed the rotten politics going on in Parker's office was too much for you to take. Yes, I resigned, all right. That was about two months ago. Uh, sit down, Lois. Clark, right, leave thanks. something to talk over. Mr. Remsen has come to me with a rather astounding offer. If he means what he says... And don't worry about that. I meant every word of what I said. Well, if that's really the case, we're about to start one of the biggest anti-crook campaigns this paper's ever had the privilege of sponsoring. Mr. Remsen, I wish you'd tell these two exactly what you told me. Gladly. You see, it was two months ago that I resigned as District Attorney Parker's assistant. Under his regime, I saw things going on that were pretty crooked, pretty hard to stomach. I don't think I have to remind you of the almost number of criminals, gangsters, trigger men, slot machine vendors, crooks of all sorts, in fact, who slipped between the fingers of the law because of the help they got from Parker. No, I don't think you do. There's certainly a lot of them. Sophie Sonderman, Lucky Larry Lorimer... An easy furness, and a lot more. Exactly. It's because of Parker and his crooked management of the district attorney's office that the men you just mentioned, and many more like them who are menaces to law-abiding citizens, are still at large in this city. Now, for two months, I've wanted to do something. I wanted to start a campaign, do something, to get Parker out of office. You're right, Mr. Ramsey. With uh, Mayor Healy in office, a campaign against Parker ought to be easy. You know Mayor Healy's reputation. Sure, the clean-up mayor. Dedicated himself to having the cleanest city in the world. Right. Now, I've talked with Mayor Healy. He's as anxious to get Parker out of office as any of us. Uh-huh. But there's one hitch. Oh, and what's that? The people themselves. You see, it's only those of us who are on the inside who know what Parker really is. The general public thinks of him as a philanthropist, a generous charity worker. He's built up that reputation. Of course, merely as a blind. Before Mayor Healy can do anything, we've got to expose Parker to the people for what he really is. And how do you propose to do that, Mr. Anson? Simple. I worked in Parker's office as Parker's assistant for a long, long time. I kept my eyes and ears open. I'm in a position now not only to make definite charges against District Attorney Parker, but I can back up those charges with substantial proof. Well, I've got everything that could possibly be needed. Signed letters, photostatic copies of checks given to Parker by well-known criminals. A photostatic copy of his account book up to two months ago. And a lot more proof if we need it. You see, Clark? Lost? Remsen's idea is for the Daily Planet to start an anti-Parker campaign. You two will write the story for the information Remsen gives you. Huh? It's the greatest chance we've ever had to do the public a real service, and I'm all for it. Yeah, say nothing of the boost in circulation, eh, Chief? Well, that does enter into it, of course. A newspaper's lifeblood, so to speak, is its circulation. Oh, Mr. White. Ah, uh, no, wait a minute. I didn't mean that as a pun, young woman. You both know as well as I do that the better our circulation, the more advertising we get. And we depend on that advertising to keep us going. However, the important thing is not only to get Parker out of office, but if possible, to put him behind bars as well. If ever a man deserved prison for what he's done... You're quite right, of course. Well, when do we get to work? The sooner the better. What's the matter with right now? Okay with me. Me too. Fine. You can get all the dope you need for your first article from Ransom and have it ready for the early edition. You'll print the story tonight and have it on the streets in the morning. Oh, hold on. Uh, not so fast, Mr. White. I'm afraid you'll have to give me a little time to get my stuff prepared. It won't take you long to get enough material together for one article, will it? Don't forget, I have a lot of other things to do as well. However, I believe I can have enough material for the first article against Parker ready by about, uh, 
Shall we say four this afternoon? Hmm, suits me. Lois and I have a date for dinner and the theater afterwards. But we can whip out an article between four and seven without half trying. Okay with you, Lois? Sure thing. Good. Then let's all meet in my office here at four o'clock this afternoon. All right. Mr. Remsen, I can't tell you how indebted I am to you for the chance you're giving us. A chance to do a really great service for the people of this city. All right, then. Four o'clock this afternoon here in my office. 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47... Romney, will you, for heaven's sake, stop playing with that yo-yo? Ah, oh, D.A., look what you went and made me do. I bet I could have gotten up to a herd on my yo-yo if you hadn't interrupted. I don't pay I... you to play with a yo-yo. Now put it away. Uh, what's eating you, D.A.? Well, I remember the time I could sit here in your private office and play with the yo-yo all day long. All right, you, all you right. You remember the day I almost broke 100? I got up to 85 and then a string broke? I bet I could have... If you don't that... stop talking... Gee, I'm sorry, D.A. You are upset, ain't you? Upset is hardly the word for it. I'm in a spot, and for once in my life, I don't know what to do about it. Who's bothering you, D.A.? Just give me his name and address. No, no, no. This is one thing that can't be handled by strong-arm methods. Brownie, the doc was in to see me this morning. Yeah, uh, that's one of the guys that's sort of keeping near the ground for you, ain't it? Yes. He told me something that set me to thinking. The Daily Planet is starting a campaign to get me out of office and put me behind bars. The Daily Planet, eh? Well, it's simple. I just mosey up, pay the editor a little visit. Haven't I, I just I told you it's not as simple as all that? We're not dealing with one person now, Brownie. We're dealing with a newspaper, a great corporation. I wouldn't be unduly worried about it. I've been through this sort of thing before, except... Yeah, except what? Brownie, the man who's supplying the material for these articles is none other than Ralph Remsen. Remember him? Oh, do I say there was a guy. He was the straightest guy I ever met. Say, you remember the arguments you used to have and I finally quit? And yes, I yes, I remember. I remember only too well. If it were anyone but Remsen, we might be able to buy him off. Well, what's wrong with bumping him off? Can't do that. He's probably turned over all the material he's got to the newspaper. No, Brownie, this seems to be one problem that has no answer to it. One riddle that seems to have no solution. Well, my opinion... Wait a minute. Uh, come in. I said come in. Uh, See who it is, Mr. Brownie. Okay. I do. Oh, it ain't nobody. There ain't nobody here. On the contrary, Brownie, there is someone here. Quite definitely here. What what, 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 what was that? Brownie, did you hear it too? Why, of course he heard it. You both here. I'm here in this room with you, but you can't see me. You might ask me to sit down, Parker. Yes. Yes, by all means. Uh, sit down, please. I hope my coming hasn't been too much of a shock to you. You see... Wait a minute. What's going on here? Who are you? Where are you? As to who I am, Parker, that need not concern you. As to where I am, I'm sitting in this chair across from you. You cannot see me because I am invisible. I'm getting out of here. Where's me? Yo, yo. Hey, where you are, Brownie. You're not going to be hurt. As a matter of fact, I've come here, Parker, to offer my services to you. Your... Your services? In this matter of the newspaper campaign that's getting underway. Oh. That. You need my help, Parker. You're powerless to prevent the Daily Planet from printing that story alone. But I can prevent them from printing it. How? Leave that to me. The question is, are you willing to pay for whatever help I can give you? Certainly I'm willing to pay. But see here, what's this gag about being invisible? How could anybody possibly by the greatest stretch of the imagination... <laughs> I will only say, Parker, that there is nothing supernatural about it. I make myself invisible by means of a trick. But that trick is shall, of course, remain a secret with me. Now let's get down to business. A campaign directed against you has been started. If it is not stopped, it will surely wreck your career and ruin you forever. Only I can stop it. How much are you willing to pay? How much do you want? One hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand? Oh, that's ridiculous. It's, it's downright criminal. How well you know the meaning of the word. Parker, I want one hundred thousand dollars. Not a penny more. Now you're sure, you two, that Remsen has given you enough material for the first article against District Attorney Parker? I think so, Chief. It's all about the Lucky Larry Lorimer case. 
photographer's working on the photostats and certain checks and things now. Lois and I'll finish the article at just about the time the pictures are ready. Now, don't worry. The story will break tomorrow morning without fail. Now, don't forget to get in that bit about the fixed jury man. Well, I've got to know that right here, Miss Ramsey. Good. Lois, well, uh, you mustn't forget we <laughs> had a dinner and theater day together. The quicker we get started on this article, the better. That's so. And when you finish it, you can tear it up. What? What, 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 what under the sun? Oh, who said that? Uh, didn't somebody say... Well, either I heard a strange voice in this room or I'm going crazy. No, no. You did hear a strange voice. Who said that? I did, Mr. Kent. What? Who are you? Where are you? I'm standing behind Editor White's chair. Great Scott. Scott! As to who I am, gentlemen, Miss Lane, prepare to do business with the Invisible Man. What strange mystery surrounds the Invisible Man? By what trick does he make himself invisible? And how does he intend to stop our friends from publishing their articles about District Attorney Parker? Be sure to hear the next thrilling and mystifying episode of this story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics Man.